Hello everyone. In this uh, presentation, in Jacob's course, we'll continue on from the, the previous presentation on Abraham's family. We saw that in Abraham's family that Abraham, he failed in the first offering of the annual sacrifice. Normally in this situation, God can't work with a central person again. But this is God's third attempt to lay the foundation of, for the Messiah. And he had to achieve some result at this time, otherwise it'd be too long to wait. And so God asked Abraham to make a much greater condition of indemnity, a greater offering. And as we saw, this was the offering of Isaac. So Abraham, together with Isaac, was willing to offer his, his own son. But uh, due to Abraham's incredible faith, his absolute obedience to God, uh, he didn't need to go through the external motion of killing Isaac. So a much greater uh, offering was made, a much greater indemnity condition, so God could continue working with uh, Abraham's family. But now the central person has passed now from Abraham uh, to Isaac. So Isaac, because he was the one willing to offer his life. And so therefore, the foundation of substance should be realized through his sons, which were Esau, the firstborn in a Cain position, uh, and Jacob, the secondborn. So Esau, in the archangel position, he had to reverse the fall. And so he had to unite completely with Jacob. Now, how did this happen? We see this actually uh, one day. Esau was cooking stew at the in, at his home and Jacob he came home from hunting and he could smell the delicious uh, stew and he said to Esau uh, he said to Jacob give me some of that stew but then Jacob said a very strange uh, thing to him I, I'll give you some stew but if you sell me your birthright and uh, the birthright means his right of inheritance as a the firstborn son as a firstborn son uh, but even more strange Esau said what use is my birthright if I'm starving so Esau sold his birthright for a plate of stew this some, some time later about 40 years later uh, it was time for the father Isaac to give the birthright normally to the firstborn Esau. Rebekah, uh, Isaac's wife, their mother, told Jacob to disguise himself as Esau. Put on a, a, a coat because Isaac was blind at that time. So, es so Jacob disguised himself as Esau and he took the blessing by deceit. Isaac, thinking he was given the blessing to Esau, gave it to Jacob. So Jacob got the blessing from Isaac. How it happened, we don't know. The Bible doesn't say. But he maybe signed something. Now Esau came back. He came to receive the blessing. But he, he found out that Isaac already gave the blessing to Jacob. So naturally he was furious. He, he wanted to uh, kill Jacob. Now Rebekah, realizing this situation, told Jacob, you better leave here, you better flee. And she told him to go to Haran, a place where uh, his uncle Laban was there. And he worked for Laban for 21 years. So what's the meaning of this time? Laban was a very deceitful person. He, de he deceived Jacob 10 times out of his wages. It means that Jacob, he, is, he had to go through a course of indemnity and he had to reverse his fallen nature there. So Jacob, the way he treated Esau was very cunning, the way he deceived, deceived him. So Jacob had to experience the same as Esau experienced. Now, through this 21 years, he acquired a family and uh, God told him to go back. You have to go back to meet Esau. 
Now on the way back, there's a very interesting passage in the Bible in Genesis 32, 24 to 28. It said he meets God at the ford of Jabok, at the river, and he wrestles with God until the dawn. And then God says, you will no longer be called Jacob, but Israel. His name changed to Israel because you've striven with God and with men and have prevailed. Then he went on and he, externally the situation was that uh, when Esau heard he's coming back, he wanted to meet him as well. But it says in the uh, Bible he gathered 400 men willing to kill Jacob and everything he owned. He's still very resentful, quite naturally. So Jacob is coming towards Esau, and Esau is coming toward him. Now, Jacob, he sent many gifts to Esau. He sent almost everything he had to him. And finally, they, they embraced. When Jacob gave everything to Esau, Esau Esau's heart was melted, uh, and he embraced Jacob. And he said, I don't need these things. And they embraced, they united. Now, this is actually the foundation of substance that, that really God was trying to achieve as a foundation for the Messiah. Jacob, un, uh, Esau united with Jacob. And um, the internal battle was achieved when Jacob wrestled with God. He made a strong determination. And then externally he could fulfill it. In a way, he was risking his life because he was going toward his brother, with these 400 men who really wanted to kill him. It was more easy for Jacob, I think, to run away or to stay in Haran. But no, he came back. He wanted to face what he needs to do. He had faced his responsibility. And he restored his relationship with Esau. And he realized the foundation of substance. Now, as we've seen in the previous uh, two lectures, the two presentations... The Messiah should come when the foundation of faith and the foundation of the substance is realized. But that didn't happen. And the reason for this is because a whole nation of Egypt is established, centered on Satan. So the Messiah couldn't come on a family, family level foundation. Also that Jacob, uh, Abraham failed in the first offering, so 400 years would need to pass at least. But nevertheless, uh, the, fam the foundation for the Messiah was established by Jacob and Esau in Abraham's family. And so this history uh, does not need to be repeated. And we, we look at the, from Noah to Joseph, later on you'll see the significance of of this, but a family level foundation to receive the Messiah was established, and the Messiah could come. And this, this uh, foundation can never be erased. That's why the, later on, uh, the next central person, which was uh, Moses, when God appeared to him, God referred to himself in Exodus 3 verse 6 as the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. The reason for this is because the joint effort between Abraham, Isaac and Jacob is like, from God's point of view, is like one generation. God's will, God's foundation to uh, their foundation for the Messiah was established through those three persons. So the foundation for God's work on a national level and later send the Messiah is needed. Anyway, thank you very much uh, here in this presentation. It's very important to understand that the birthright is very significant. It's not just that the material birthright. We know at the time of the fall, Satan took the birthright from Adam and he, took it, he re kept it ever since. So the birthright, when the birthright is taken, as if Satan could take the lineage. 
And that's why we hear passages like John 8 verse 44, where Jesus said to the people, you're of your father the devil, and your will is to do your father's desires. So this really symbolically restored the lineage. It's a foundation for the lineage to be restored, which the Messiah would come as the new Adam, who would substantially establish God's lineage on the earth. Anyway, thank you very much for hearing this presentation. Uh, we'll continue next time in um, Moses' course. Uh, thank you very much. Thank mm -hmm. you.